All right, friends, welcome to some pilgrims. If I were to make a list of maps that are classic Age of Empires 2 Diplo maps, pilgrims would be very high up on that list. On pilgrims, you start in a tiny little island, and then well, you don't have to choose to leave, but most people choose to leave and go towards the mainlands. Now, they are all very much in the dark on what's out there, but as they sail to the west, most players are sailing to the west anyways, they are going towards new lands. Uh, on these lands, there are predators, there are wolves waiting to woo-woo-woo you, and then there's also endless possibilities with turkeys and berries and trees and stone and gold. Of course, potential allies, potential enemies, potential friends, and potential sweethearts? I don't know. Depends how crazy it gets. Uh, Greasy Joe starts it all off, though, says, bad time to start laundry. <laughs> A greasy Joe, I guess, was doing laundry, got selected for the community game, and is now a little torn on that. Maybe Greasy Joe will, like, click up the feudal age at some point and then finish the laundry, but... If if your username is Greasy Joe, I can only imagine how disgusting your laundry is. Alright, um, I want to get some things out of the way here. So, first and foremost, thanks for watching. Uh, especially those who've shown up live, it's been cool to have such a big audience for community games again. Um, as this is the, the second game I've done on Twitch... Uh, back with community games really excited for it. The other thing is um, The no one has allied each other yet Which is pretty wild and then the Kings explode. All right So if a king were to die here, there's an explosion. We would do that a lot But in case you didn't know that Kings do explode uh, wolves do not attack Kings. Thankfully they will attack your villagers though And I think purple wants to venture to the very corner But that is normally quite risky because there could you could walk past more wolves, but somehow that hasn't happened and I think purple has actually got a pretty decent spot over here. Uh, woo, 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 woo against Fox! Fox is being attacked by a wolf, which is pretty wild. And Fox actually survives. Also, I, I really appreciate how Fox is in the orange here. But let's get our introductions in, all right? Now that the players seem to be picking their spots, I think we should start it all off here. In the gray, playing as the Franks, player who's decided to TC the starting island, and has not sent any villagers to the mainland yet. We have a hot cow. A hot cow. Um, in the blue, also running into a wolf in the very north, we have Flying Dutchman. Flying Dutchman's playing as the Japanese. We'll see if Flying Dutchman chooses the TC spot soon. For now it's actually a lumber camp. So, you know, the start on this map is very difficult if you've never played it before. I do think we have some first timers here. Also heard something get attacked. It slightly stressed me out. I'm not sure who that was. Um, moving along then, I guess from the north of the mainland. In the red, somehow holding access to every turkey in existence, we have Stone Age Knave. And Stone Age Knave is playing as the Portuguese. Stone Age Knave has played in community games before. Would expect, would expect excuse me, uh, some more experience here. Not too far away from Stone Age, we have Fox, who... Built the TC immediately upon getting to the mainland. Didn't walk around at all. Not really the best TC spot I've ever seen. Maybe a bit of inexperience for Fox. Could be a first-timer here playing as the Vikings. Um, also, not too far away from Fox, we have Pat Patamonium. And Patamonium playing as the Malay. Built some outposts, interestingly enough. What's, what's so funny about building outposts here, watch how much vision the Malay dock gives you. These outposts are actually useless because Malay gives you so much vision on the dock. Watch this. Ready? Boom. <laughs> so I appreciate that, like, we know why Teal's making outposts, and obviously outposts over here give you some vision. Teal, I think, is very scared. But, of course, Teal happened to get the sieve that gives you more vision from docks. It does look very nice. Maybe we've got some another beginning player here. Moving along, further down towards the south, we have Dr. Tentacle playing as the Chinese here in the yellow. Uh, in the green, then, we have Roach, who's a longtime community gamer and one of my mods. And Roach probably going to be one of the favorites in this game. Playing as a Civ that is just insane in the Incas. Lots of different things you can do with the Incas. Uh, over to the west in the purple, we've got Greasy Joe, who, again, is in the middle of doing laundry, playing as the Tatars. And then I... I think that's actually everybody. I think I've introduced everyone. Uh, players are starting to chat a little bit. Fox is crazy start. Landed on the small island first. No archer ranges, though. Okay, don't make... You don't get to bring me into this. 
people, all right? Why does a bad moment for you have to turn around to an embarrassing moment for me? I appreciate the, the, the banter, though, Fox. As disappointing as that is. And hey, it's a Diplo game. They're allying each other. Imagine that. Everyone's super late to the party on that. Yellow's going to ally people now. Greasy Joe already has. And well played. Again, kings explode. And we've got some time to build up here until, you know, eventually the action begins. So I would say the key with the start here is you need to rely on, on making quite a few fishing ships. So the thing you don't want to forget about is obviously, I think teasing the mainland's great, but then docking the shorelines and adding fish is a huge help. There's fish everywhere, guys. Like, look at all that. And that can help your eco. Also, look at this. Those two wolves. Do we think those wolves are going to survive to the end of the game, guys? I would say probably. It's kind of interesting that the map generated like that. Yellow, starting to Diplo a little bit. So Dr. Tentacle maybe wants to be one of the greater Diplo players in this game. Says, hey, Gray, we're neighbors. Or we're neighbors. And Hot Cow says, hi, Tenta. And Yellow says, friends. And Gray says, besties. Now, Gray said this to everybody. Said, hey, Tenta, besties. So everyone else is going to be like, feels kind of left out. You know, it's like if you're in a group of people and you invite one person to a party... And then they're like, sure, I'll be there. And then the other three people are just sitting there looking at you guys. Like, why are you talking about this in front of our faces here? So, uh, you know, that that's notable. I think that um, people may feel as though gray and yellow are a threat. But gray is learning now. And a hot cow has gone to the Diplo menu, is typing only to yellow, and says, how do I make you an ally? Okay, so if that doesn't tell you... How new Gray is with Diplo? I don't know what will. I did say, I, I did give as good an intro as I can. It is actually very difficult when you're in the game to do all this. So Roach typed to everyone and just said allies. So we have four people here who haven't allied anyone yet? That's normally suicide in these games because there's normally one. If there, The thing is, everyone typically allies and then you have one person who hasn't. And then that one person is the odd man out here. Hmm. Roach says, purple wannabe allies get to the corner and trade the long way. And Teal says, me neutral. Smiley face. <laughs> Teal, you are an interesting player. Can we just talk about Teal's base right now? We've got the Watergate scandal here. All right. Full on Watergate at Teal's base. We've got uh, outposts all over the place. Uh, yes. uh, houses. Teal has made walls, but there's no gold in in, in these walls. And Teal, and then announces, "I'm neutral." You know, everybody else wants to be friends here. So I don't know the rank of these players. Uh, it's important to note we do not restrict anyone. We are we allow anyone to play, whether they're a pro or the biggest noob you've ever seen. In the past, Roach had played a lot of community games. Roach is always very nice, too. So he's like a strong player who's very nice, who'd work together with people. And so I would say Roach has got to be one of the favorites here. But uh, Greasy Joe's score is pretty high right now. Greasy Joe looking to be in a pretty good spot as well. So we'll see. I do want to say thank you to a couple people on the stream here. Griffmeister, thank you very much for the dono, says... Two weeks off work with nothing but Warlords 2. And of course, it's the first night back at work. I'm sitting in my truck missing community games. <laughs> Hopefully in park right now. Thank you. Uh, we will enjoy a stream. Obviously, watch the VOD. Hopefully, you can get in next week or something. Uh, thank you, The Water, for the gifted subs earlier. Spreading the love. Thank you, Sky Knights. And thank you, Manello, for the prime. And Greasy Joe says, I have no wood. Which is a bit weird because there's trees everywhere on this map. But Roach will be the first to Castle Age. Anything else to talk about here? This wood line's actually kind of bad for Roach. I guess if you go back here, though, you could have a pretty safe spot. I was going to think, chop through the trees and open this up for yourself. But actually, if you want safety, building castles back here and putting your king inside the castle would be really nice. It'd be really hard for people to get to you. But then again, you'd only be able to escape one way too, which could be really bad. 
So I'm not sure. Eco count is at the bottom left. So it always prioritizes the top three. Purple is the, has the highest right now. The lowest right now is yellow, Dr. Tentacle. And uh, I think that's just because yellow just had a slow start, maybe with the Chinese or something. Also, it doesn't look like yellow added many fishing ships. So yellow clearly just inexperienced on that front. Gray's King is actually in yellow's TC. Huh. Well, yellow's not going to kill that king if yellow has any brains, because if that king goes down, there will be an explosion, which would then kill yellow. But that's an interesting spot for a hot cow to send the king. And Roach actually sets four people to enemy. Four people who've not done alliances yet. What is this game? Normally everyone's friends at the start. Normally people would react to that as well. It'd be like, what? Roach, why are you doing this? Oh, there's actually a hole there. Ah, interesting. So there is a little gap. Roach getting attacked by a wolf. Roach is about to get woo 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 Nope. Denied. Wolf goes down. Roach first to Castlage. Roach adding TCs. Dr. Tentacle says, The stress. I can feel it. <laughs> it's, I always go over. I don't know if you notice this. It's easier to read chat if I go to the edge of the map. And I'm also like, ooh, YouTube title. <laughs> ooh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that could be really good. I mean, I could see it too. L look at Teal's base. Teal is like full-on onion strategy. One of my favorite casts ever. Many years ago now. So many layers of fortifications here. And I guess needed to secure some gold here. So, Blind Dutchman says, hey, Red, want to be friends. They are right next to each other. It would make sense for both of them to be friendly. Hmm. T90, you said the Incas are now an insane sieve. Have they been buffed? Yeah. Um, Incas were always really good with their options. And then the devs gave them an option where, uh, or a bonus where their, their the food cost is less on their military units per age. I actually think they've gone too far with it. I think it's like competitively, right? Like not for community games, but competitively, I actually think it's it was too big of a buff. With the sieve already being so good. Um, their identity is essentially they're good at everything. And now everything's a bit cheaper as well. So yeah, they're really strong, I think. For community games, though, uh, lacking like Siege Onager, which some sieves get. Uh, having said that, none of the sieves here get Siege Onager. But like, maybe lacking Bombard Cannons could be an issue. Lacking Cav could be an issue. But I could see Cameo being very strong. Not the most impressive Diplo game ever, guys. Red just didn't respond to blue at all. Blue allied red anyways. Like, I believe in this player, but... Again, easier said than done. The amount of times people have played in a game and then come back afterwards and been like, oh my goodness, it is so hard to do in game. Too much to count. I actually have one specific memory. I'm not going to say their name because I don't want to call them out. I've got too much power. You know, I don't want to... You know, make people feel bad about it. But I remember a YouTube comment, okay? <laughs> it was a YouTube comment. And this person was very judgmental. So let's just create the phrase. And they were like, oh my god. I don't know how people get so excited to join community games. And then never chat to anyone any at any point. It's so frustrating. So let's say they say that, right? Then they show up on stream. And I remember certain comments. Like certain things stick with me, right? And so they got selected. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say, because I'm not saying their name, they sucked. And they chat at all. And then when they did, it was like to the wrong person. And then they like missed a whole bunch of messages. So it's just not easy, right? That's my point. And then later they had the, they had the awareness and they were like, oh my goodness, I didn't realize how hard it is to do in the game. Oh my God. You know, it's, it's a skill. And like some people actually have Diplo hotkeys. So, like, people have the menus hotkeyed, and they get used to doing that. And still, like, base has been built up here. Orange doesn't have a single ally. This is what Orange sees. Imagine the stress of a community game, your first one ever, and then you're in the dark. Now, Orange has played pretty well after the weird TC spot. But doesn't have any friends. Red doesn't have any friends either. And, like... Greasy Joe has allied everyone, and people haven't always, you know, accepted it, but... 
I think what a lot of people do though is they won't really diplo until their eco setup. So I would say in like around the 30 minute mark, I think is when people will start to chat a bit more. Can you check the island with wolves? Yep, here you go. Wolves are fine. Wolves are good. All kings are on the mainland. And everyone's pretty nicely spread out. I would say that Teal's position is kind of cramped. And Teal adding a lot of fishing ships with the Malay. And Malay fish traps have tons of food. I could see Teal prioritizing that. It feels like that's what the docks are for. Oh, we've got a fox. We've got a hot cow. We have a flying Dutchman. We have someone in the Stone Age. We've got a tentacle. We've got a, a wheezing or a coughing ray, which is apparently what this name means in German. And then we've got a guy named Joe who's very greasy. Maybe eats one too many burgers. I don't know. Interesting mix of names here. Greasy Joe says, hi, Yellow, just passing. And Yellow says, no problem. Now, Wolf is attacking that villager. That's not important. This castle is a castle going up from a player who is not allied to anyone. Orange says, we're not friends. And Teal says, we're all friends. But there's a way to prove that. Talk is cheap. I think Blue realized, oh, we're all friends? I need to ally that person. So Blue immediately allies Fox after seeing we're all friends. And Blue says, I am friends with you. Nice. You see the difference, though? Like, in the struggle? Blue, I am friends with you. Allying just now. Roach is already talking about trade, already getting relics. Purple, if you build a monastery, I have a relic for you. They're being super nice with relics. I don't know where these villagers are going exactly, but Red is still not allied to anyone. And Teal wants to build a tower. <laughs> Guys, figure it out. Fox and Patamodium, figure it out. Ally each other. <laughs> they think they could, like, speak it into existence. <laughs> you remember that episode of The Office? Where Michael's like, I declare bankruptcy. And they're like, you can't just declare it. Declare <laughs> Declaring bankruptcy doesn't do anything. I think it's a similar thing here. Where, like, Teal has declared... Blue Blue declared I'm friends with you after allying, but Teal said we're all friends and just left it at that. Hasn't allied anybody. That's gonna be a problem. Greasy Joe's offering up people's offering up turkeys to people because it was recently Thanksgiving, which is kind of nice. <laughs> True. I didn't he didn't say it. <laughs> he declared it. <laughs> oh man. So I think now like I think Teal may feel like in the moment, this person's my enemy because their castle's attacking me. So they they just, I think they both actually want to be friends, but because of the confusion, they're just going to fight it out. And I pick Berserk over Karambit any day. Berserk's a really strong military unit to have against other forms of infantry. And well, we'll see what ends up happening here. Red Scared of the World has kind of stoned off this area. And is sending the king into the corner. Remember, blue did ally red, but red did not accept it. This is... This is just not... Not pretty, as far as the diplomacy is concerned. <laughs> I feel like we've got four people. They're excited to be in and maybe a little frustrated by the moment. But as wild as it is, and as many learning lessons as we might have, as Teal changes someone to neutral, which... Again, I would not suggest, because if you change someone to neutral, that still says to them, this person doesn't trust me. In theory, neutral could be a really, really good thing for community games. I think in actual practice, I've never seen that be the smartest of plays. But anyways, you know, as we adapt to how these players are playing it, I like community games because every game is a little bit different. Some people are really aggressive, some players are really mean, some players are too nice, some players... Are, are noobs, some players are pro, it's fun. Yeah, they went random civs here, and Teal seems to have understood the melee quite nicely. But Teal set Teal Teal set Gray on neutral. 
and did not ally. And Gray says just taking that one out. So I guess because they're, these are harbors now and these have been upgraded by the Malay, they're firing arrows. And Gray doesn't like that. What a weird game. Oh boy, castle drop here. Quick wall! Quick wall! Nice quick walling action there from Teal, who's going to drop a castle, which is right on Orange's eco. That's a big problem for Orange, because Orange is the majority of the eco and the king over here. And I don't know if there's been a community game recently that has really shown this game's tough, right? Still good quick walling, though. Double castle plus Manganel is going to be really helpful. Meanwhile, Roach has 143 villagers, hasn't been attacked at all, has an ally in Greasy Joe, is booming up, and could kill anybody at any point in time. Everyone else has not really been working together, and life has been very difficult. Teal is in the Imperial Age, though. Dang. Red is 143 villagers, blue is 109. So red and blue, if they were to actually sort out some type of alliance, that'd be great. But I don't know if that will ever happen here. I, I mean, we haven't seen any chat from Stone Age Nave. I guess it would make sense someone from the Stone Age can't communicate that well. So maybe a bit of role-playing action. Who knows? Gray being dangerous, question mark. Yellow says, a bit, yes. And Roach says, okay, I'll deal with it. Well, that's going to be a problem for you, ha hot cow. But remember, kings explode, guys. Orange is making a run for it. But it's going to run... Oh, it's actually going near blue. And blue is friends with orange, so that's nice. All right. Getting pretty cramped out here, folks. It's good Orange left because Teal's got Trebs now and could start to take out Orange's castles. Orange also has Trebs. And this is so much more aggressive than you would expect in a Diplo game. Big army count. Big Cav Archer count for Greasy Joe. Greasy Joe's got 37 military. That's pretty nice. Greasy Joe also with markets to eventually trade with Roach. I think Greasy Joe and Roach are just going to kill everybody? But if blue and red start to team up and work together, I could see that changing. Hey, T90, what happens if a king dies on a transport? Does it explode? No, if the if the king sinks, there's no explosion. So that would be the one way that you could kill yourself without exploding anybody. Now, what happens is, is they explode underwater, and then there's a massive wave, and it floods everybody's eco. <laughs> no, that's I'm kidding. Not sure if that's possible to put into the game. All right, Fox is... Oh, oh, that's your only friend! What? That's literally the only person who allied you. What is this game? Fox is like, I think I'm dead. And T-90 always says to use the king against people before you die. So let's do that. This is the only person who allied you. Poor freaking Flying Dutchman is going to explode. And maybe he'll die as well here. This is a big explosion. He did notice... Oh, my God. Fox, what are you doing? Feel horrible for Flying Dutchman. <laughs> That's the only person that actually gave Fox a home. And Fox probably felt like he was going to die. Now, obviously, had Fox gone to Teal, that would make a lot more sense because Teal's the one attacking. Anyways, two people are dead. I'm very confused here. And Blue just says no. And think about it. Blue offered alliance to red. Red never responded. And then blue offered friendship to, to, to orange. And orange did that. Well, you can never trust a fox, I suppose. Red now doesn't have a teammate either, which is going to be pretty brutal as well. I was holding on to hope that things would change there. Now, that was a delete. And then obviously orange got the kill there. But the kings explode... I think Orange knew that. And again, Orange just probably thought, this game is a wash for me. I might as well take somebody out with me. But taking out Blue? Just horrible. Just horrible. I think it really shows you guys, like... I think Flying Dutchman is going to have issues trusting people in real life after that. Uh, that's brutal. I uh, might be rolling out, like, laying down on a, on a red couch or... <laughs> you know, talking to a therapist about it recently. Like, listen... I trusted somebody. I opened myself up to the world, and the world, the world, the world hurt me. I don't know. This just got real weird. Um, okay, trades happening. Flying Dutchman in chat says I'm so traumatized right now. As you should be. As you should be. It's all right. You can get past it. 
Um, Kar oh, geez. Karambit Warriors against Organ Guns? <laughs> uh, abort. Teal, abort. Keep in mind, Teal still has no allies. So this is not the only player who has no allies here. Manganels are on the way. Manganels are going to go down to the Elite Organs, though. And this is going to be another player who's going to die. Now, Teal is being killed by red. So logic would say if you're going to use your king as a weapon at all, you would use it against red. Who's got an amazing setup, by the way. I also think organ guns are really hard for the Incas to stop. So we're still like, eventually expecting Roach to be very strong. We'll see if that happens. Now, Roach is currently attacking a hot cow. So elite Kamiyoks are attacking Paladins. And I think Gray is really squished, and Gray's going to die too. This has been a weird game. I appreciate you guys really focused on the Wolves here, okay? People keep bringing it up. The Wolves are fine. The Wolves are in a good spot. Hot Cow needs to defend. Because the King is in that castle. Hot Cow ran right through Roach's gate there. He's actually going to take out the Treb. Well played. I still do think Roach should have the eco set up to make more Kamiyoks. Dr. Tentacle is here to help Roach. I definitely picked the right person to team with. And this is... Perhaps a product... Maybe it, it's very possible this is a product of... You know, my second time back on Twitch. A lot of people playing for the first time. Maybe don't watch a lot of community games. The amount of people that haven't allied. Or just a product of, you know, getting new people in. It happens. But, you know, that king from Grey is running to Teal right now. And Teal's <laughs> docks are going to kill it. <laughs> which could kill him. And Grey's back in the TC now. And Blue's out of the game. Orange is out of the game. Flying Dutchman traumatized about it. And uh, Grey's king is making a move now. Now, this, is, this makes more sense, right? A hot cow is being attacked by Green. So a hot cow wants to send the bomb to Green. This is, seems logical to me. Roach says be careful, because Roach knows what this could mean. And the king dies there for Grey, and a hot cow out of the game. Now, all the players who have died so far have not really benefited from... They, they didn't benefit from their start. They weren't friends with anybody. They didn't really talk to anybody. So lessons learned there. We can pay respects to them anyhow. There's going to be a big boom here, and Yellow could be included in that. Now, Yellow seems to be running. Yellow seems aware. Oh, and the king dies! These explosions are massive! Yellow's out of the game as well! Dr. Tentacle goes down. There have been some brutal lessons learned. Brutal lessons taught in this game. And Yellow was aware, which made the death all the more painful. Yellow just didn't run away in time. And now there's going to be another explosion. So I don't know if you guys are excited to watch these cameos go splat, but you're going to see it anyways. And now we have four people left. Yellow says, ah, it ranged that much. Good to know. Yep, exactly, Yellow. Unfortunately, it is a big explosion. So I think we're going to have another player go down here soon, right? Teal is still just like me against the world mode, has not allied anyone, who's also up against Red, who is me against the world mode. Would actually make a lot of sense for Red and Teal to potentially team up. That way, Red has a teammate. But Red just steamrolling here. I could see Teal just running away, trying to survive and not thinking about using the King as a weapon. But pretty soon, it's going to be Greasy Joe, Roach, and Stone Age Knave, and that's it. Greasy Joe and Roach talking about relics. Greasy Joe and Roach having trade. I, I feel like I would prefer two versus one. I'd prefer to have Tatars and Incas against the Portuguese. And there's a transport ship from Teal. Perhaps Teal will try and run away in that. But I think, like, you know, the other factor for Teal as well is, is clearly some of these players who got killed off, they were on the weaker side compared to the top three. But guys, that's where Diplo helps, right? You can be a weaker player, but if you're allied with people, then you have a team, you know? And, like, I think Roach would have been buddy-buddy with Gray, but Gray and, and Yellow and Red, they were all, like, running into each other and creating problems. King is in the transport ship there for Teal. And let's see. 
Organ guns, bomber cannons slowly taking out the buildings. The docks do fire arrows, but it shouldn't do that much against organs. Yeah, red hasn't said a word. Like, red was teamed with blue? Uh, well, no, sorry. Blue allied red. Red basically was like, hey, do you want to be friends? Or, so, what is wrong with me? Blue said that to red. Sorry, red never responded. Yes. And Greasy Joe and Roach, the only true alliance in this game. <laughs> the only alliance. <laughs> they must be so confused with how things have gone. What a weird game. And Teal is actually making elephants over here, I'm noticing. So I think Teal wants a sneak attack on Red. Yes. And Roach says, want to go after Teal? Teal says to everyone, running. Okay. You should do the same. <laughs> okay, interesting. So that could be a warning to everyone. <laughs> that could be a warning everyone to everyone else. I like how Greasy Joe passes the message along. Says he's running. <laughs> Teal says, you don't know what I've seen. There we go. There's some chatter, baby. Let's go. This is what it's all about. You don't know what I've seen. Oh, my God. I've seen you not ally Orange and have you both be very confused. I've seen you declare alliances but not actually select them. But I love the energy anyways. And it'll be something you look back on and be like, dang, I should have... Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now we get allies. Talk about timing. Now Teal wants to be friends with green and, and purple. But listen, that's not how the world works. You don't get to, like, not talk to people and not care about people and not work with people and then right when it's, incon right when it's convenient for you, be friends with them. Roach is laughing because Teal is desperate. And then Teal just says, ally me. I mean, I'm not sure what you offer here, but Greasy Joe did it. So Greasy Joe's like, great. There we go. I'll take another ally. And there goes the king. Off to new lands. Anyways, I think that Greasy Joe is going to now see this because of the alliance. And guys, if you're up against this many elite organs, you're going to need siege. So you need bomber cannons. Greasy Joe is going to go raid with cav archers and has also brought some trade carts. Which is, it's kind of funny to me. Anyways, that castle's going to be denied. Nice eco raid there with those Tatar Cav Archers. And Roach is saying, close the gate. Our trade, They're trying to make sure the trade's there. And Roach is obviously going to come help soon. Now, Red has done an amazing job on his own here. Stone Age Navis says, screw alliances. I don't need friends. And Stone Age has the king in this TC. And it's all like kind of walled up. And there's castles everywhere. So Stone Age is not going to be easy to kill. And this is a death ball. Now, some onagers could be helpful. Purple does have a couple onagers in there. But yeah, I don't think Purple is going to find many like, eco kills with the way Red is defended. And Greasy yeah. Joe says help. Meanwhile, Teal may be rebooming at the moment. I'm not entirely sure. Building a TC over here probably will make some docks. The king is safe. Yeah, Onager in, like, Cameo could be good. The organ guns are just so good. I I've said this before. They nerfed the Organ Gun in Early Castle. It's way better in Imp. The unit's insane. I think they... The devs have shown that with some of these gunpowder units, they like them to be strong. It is possible that you could win this with a Wonder Victory. If Patamonium could win this with a Wonder Victory, that'd be pretty insane. Okay, well, Kamiooks get a couple pokes in. Well done, Kamiooks. Onagers will splat these things. So the change that they they made, basically, they're, they're less accurate, the Orkin guns, but because they're less accurate, they're actually killing more because, like, let's say you, they automatically attack that Cav Archer, they're hitting, like, five or six around. So there's more spread on the shots, which is actually what you want. Um, But they do less damage against Siege now, so, like, five or six Onagers could deal with all this. Obviously, Bomber Cannons are there from Red as well. Um, not really seeing too much from Red beyond this. Here go the Eagles. And yeah, these... these We're about to see a whole bunch of organs go splat. Splatterooski, if that's a word. I just created that word, alright? That's a word we're going to use now. Um, 
Nice job from Red to try and kill the Onagers, though. But the little dudes with their little legs go splat as well. Onagers are also super slow and clunky, though. So this actually isn't that bad for Red. Okay, Roach misses the shot. And uh, Red holds on. Stone Age Knave takes the score lead. Stone Age Knave against the world right now. Uh, there, down go the Bomber Cannons, though. Down go some of the Orcan Guns. The army's slowly disappearing, and... Again, it is Stone Age Knave versus the world. Guys, does anyone recall a moment in this game where Stone Age Knave said anything? Like, any, any words? Like, any taunts? Any responses? Any... Nothing? Nothing. I love how Flying Dutchman is watching, and Flying Dutchman, one of the first ones to respond, and says, Nope. <laughs> Oh, poor Flying Dutchman. Alright, well, that was nice defense. Uh, Roach has a little bit of navy out here. It actually makes sense to ram some of this down. But that's, like, kind of an odd thing to pay attention to. How much do you want to bet Stone Age Knave starts to realize now I'm screwed and allies somebody? I'm going to call it, alright? We're, what, 101. I think by 105, I think that Stone Age Knave does that. One more bad fight, and Stone Age is going to reach out wanting friendship. Could be wrong. Cav archers are getting splatted, though. We just need some trebs over here so they can force a reaction, start taking down the castles. That is a lot of onager. Oh! Purple! You locked the gate! <laughs> Greasy Joe locked his own gate so he couldn't go through there. He clicked his units here, and they pathed right into the organs. Greasy Joe's got to be careful. And some of Patamodium's eco is, is a problem as well. They're pointing out that Red is here. And Green wants to help, but Green also is kind of blocked off from some of that. Patamodium going to make a run for it. Is also making docks. Again, these docks fire arrows. Tower, castle. Patamodium's still in this. And Roach says, I push here, which obviously means I push here. But due to the heat of the moment, a little bit of a typo, which I like to see. Makes me happy to see some typos. Okay. Now, you need an answer to the Bomber Cannon still here if you're Roach. But the Eagles could potentially do that job, and Red continues to push through there. Well played from Teal. Imagine if Teal wouldn't have, like, killed off so many people. This is actually a good job. We'll see how these elephants do. They are much tankier than the other things that have come out here. They're also very cheap with the Malay. They're elephants. So, hey man, meant to pick Magyard. Some of you guys probably know that reference. And Red is currently distracted, right? So it seems like Red is focused on that army instead of defending the main eco. And as we established, Red doesn't really have friends. And that is... That was Stone Age Knave's choice. Or... Maybe didn't realize it was diplomacy, even though people were talking about friendship. It's very possible. Maybe I need to clarify that a little bit more. Castle's going to start to fall as well, which are buildings which are used to produce the Orkin guns. Which will just become a bigger and bigger problem. And the elephants and the cab archers, the teamwork from Teal and Purple, going to deal with the Orkin guns finally. Onagers could come help out. But Red is going to die. So I said 105. I'm calling it. 105, 106. This would be the time where Red starts to panic and thinks, hmm, what can I do? Maybe I should be friends with somebody. I don't know if Red realizes just yet how bad this is. Now, Roach is top dog here, clearly. Like, I think Roach it, it was already going to be the favorite in this game, but then five out of the players didn't ally in a Diplo game, so that just made it so much easier for Roach. Red has below 25 army because the top three armies are always shown here. And that's bad. And ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, the king is there. And huh? How did Roach do that? Was Red running away? Hold on. Rewind. That's my rewind noise. Did Red try and run away and happen to run by the... Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so Roach was raiding this way earlier. And just happened to have the two eagles there. And Red thought, I need to get out of here with my king. Red probably told the king to go to this castle. It paths into the darkness. The darkness that is only darkness because of no alliances this game. 
and Red ran right into the Eagles. Stone Age Knave is dead. Green won't know who did that, but it was actually you, Roach. Well played. There will obviously be an explosion now. Red is out of the game. And in one of the weirder Diplo games I've seen, we now have Greasy Joe and Roach, who were friends from the start, teamed up with the final remaining player who was Teal, who didn't ally them, didn't trade with them, didn't talk with them or anyone really, at, at one point just said, ally me. And it worked. So does Teal have another trick to somehow keep these two from killing him? Uh, maybe. The wolves are still there, guys. I appreciate you guys being focused on that. So, Roach turns on everybody. Okay. Well, Roach turns on everybody. Says, well, this is the type of game it is. And Roach also horribly missed Micros and is going to be really upset that I saw that. The Roach is going to just fight it out against Purple, and uh, they'll be focused on that 1v1 here in a second. This could mean that Teal teams with Greasy Joe, and now Teal seems to realize I got a team and work together here, and there is an eco here, so like maybe we could see more elephants from Teal. I just don't know how Teal's getting gold. There's some gold income there, and, and Teal's king is pretty safe. But purple's going to get massacred here, I think. This would be the ideal time for Patamonium to make a wonder. The stockpiles are not quite there, though. If you could make a wonder on the starting on one of the starting islands while the fight was going on on the mainland, that would be sick here. And Greasy Joe says, Teal, help me? Question mark. I'm actually really excited to see what Teal says. Okay, Teal says yes. Now, Roach would have seen that yes. That yes went to everyone, but it's not going to surprise Roach that it is now him versus the world. Pretty honorable from Roach to realize you're in the lead and make it a two versus one. Yeah, it does make it the closest game. I, I don't know if it's about honor. I think, like, what you don't... What's actually bad for you is if you let the other two players have time to talk out what they're going to do and team up against you if you're top score. So if you're the top score player when there's three people left and you're all friends, you should know that you're the target and you should make your move before they coordinate, which is essentially what happened here. Um, Hussar is going to kill some of the onagers, maybe. Siege Ram from Roach is going to break down the walls. I just want to check stockpile. Everyone's super low on gold. And Patamonium has more gold workers than anyone. Are you kidding me? I mean, there is a chance then. Uh, did try and make a castle here, which is potentially going to be denied. But yeah, purple and green never really had that much trade. Because of how big the trees were, and then they had to fight off red, right? And now, of course, their trade has gone down because it was in, you know, in the midst of their ecos where all the castles are. So it says, like, there's some gold workers there for Roach, but I'm not sure that they're really going to last that long. Maybe have a relic or two, but there's not a lot of relics here on Pilgrim, so just one there for Roach. I mean, you know, Hal Bonager, Hal Bram is pretty good, but Cav Archers will pick off the Halbs if there's no Siege Meat Shield. So if you can get like 30, 40 Cav Archers and mix in Hustlers with that, it could be really good for you. And Teal, going to eventually complete this castle, you think. It also has Elephants. I think this would be a tough fight for Roach. I think this would be a really tough fight for Roach. Also, Purple's got Navy superiority, which could be a problem for Teal later on, so Teal might need to plan against dealing with that. So this has actually turned into it, as I'll show the stockpiles again. It actually turned into a really interesting game here from one where, you know, it was a little bit disappointing. <laughs> I still feel like the person who got the short end of the stick in this game is poor Flying Dutchman. <laughs> I don't know if Fox has reached out and apologized yet. They could be talking to each other in the Discord right now. But yeah, pick your pick your winner right now, viewers. Like, who do you think wins this? Army count there is bottom left. Purple's got more army than anyone. I don't think Roach can win this easily. Whoa! 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 What is this? Whoa! So glad we got the DLC, devs. So glad. Wow, what the where did this come from? There is a galleon. There is a flying Dutchman. 
I thought he was dead and is somehow on land and is going to go all the way to the edge of the map. Okay. Now, I, sometimes when this happens, uh, it will like slowly move on the edge of the map. Slowly. Oh, do I know this or what? Did I? That is as slow as it gets. I've seen this bug before, people. I've been around the block a few times. <laughs> now, what if it snipes a king? <laughs> Where is it going? Is there a king over here? Oh. <laughs> I mean, there is a king over here. It's Purple's king. That would be sick. Whoa! 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 It's shooting that mining camp! It's shooting that mining camp! What? Whoa! We were so focused on the ship, I didn't realize it was hitting the camp. All right, that, that baby's got some range. Um, well, you know, a fun little bug for us here, right? Happy to have it in a community game. Onager, Halb. Well, it's Halb versus Onager right now. Purple doesn't actually have a lot of support for the Onager, so all the Onagers are going to go down. But I got to check gold workers again. It says Roach has 17, 18 on gold, so there must be trade I'm missing. Nice clear up there from Roach. Again, Roach is the higher skilled player here. Is it villagers on gold, maybe? Teal's got that. And maybe miners somewhere. Mining away on gold that I'm just not seeing. Hmm. So, you know, Teal has 18 on gold and has the king on water, which is going to be really tough for people to invest into to stop. I think if Teal was trading on water right now with somebody, like somebody's docks, it could be really strong. Might eventually need some navy, though. Mining red golds? Red gold. Red's base. Red Red's gold where? Uh, I don't know. Gold beside castle in the north? Ah, this gold. Okay, so that's that's 13 vills. And then there's a couple of vills here. Okay, that's important. So that's uh, 3k gold. Now, ideally, you have an ally. And then you can work together with that ally. And you can trade. But Roach doesn't have an ally now. Wow. This player really knows Malay. Docks everywhere. Purple going to bring some navy over here, but purple... This, this galleon is now stuck in the wood line, I guess. It's not moving anymore. That is, is a better chance of doing damage than this does. This is that castle from green. I think we've seen the skill difference, right? Like the Halb Siege Ram, now even Skirms too coming in from Roach. It's really giving Purple some problems. And Purple's going to ask for help soon. And I don't know if Teal can help with anything beyond just elephants. And, and again, I don't know if Teal has the eco to make the elephants. Ting, 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 ting. We got the boys poking away here, folks. Also, two relics. A really big deal if you're low on gold. And Roach would love to get those two relics right now. Uh, a couple shoutouts to some people on the stream as we watch a flaming camel come onto our screen. Whoa. Not very helpful against infantry. Very helpful against cavalry, but not going to be the answer there. Uh, thank you, Schwindy, for the two months. Just love the stream. Takes it. Take Amazon's money with the uh, Prime. Yes, that's exactly it. Bezos is crying at the moment. Uh, thank you, Dr. Manfred, for the Prime. Fieldman, thanks for the 15. Thank you, Emperor Matt, for the 19. Miro, 34, says thanks for the rig next game. That's not true. I'd not rig anybody. Okay. And uh, people are saying F. I think the stream's fine. So maybe uh, we're just continuing to break Twitch here. Sky Knights, thank you for the Prime. Manello, thank you as well. Lots of new subs and resubs, guys. Teal, help me. And again, Teal says yes. And then Greasy Joe laughs. And then Teal says question mark. And then 11. Teal can't help. Like, maybe with this castle, maybe a couple Karambits. Roach is going to kill Purple. Slowly dying here. Yeah. And that's a skill, right? Trying to survive. Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe Purple found the Galleon. Um, trying to survive and hold on and delay your death is is important here. Teal says, hold on for a few more minutes, which indicates that there is going to be a plan. I do not know what that plan is. Also, it looks like this flag is on the transport ship when it's on the TC. Can we appreciate that? Can you zoom out a little bit? 
It's kind of fun. Castle will stay alive for now. Roach already thinking about pressuring this castle, though, from Teal. And taking that castle down will be hugely important here. Pull up Purple's perspective to see the boat scouted for him. Yeah, probably did get some vision there. But I think Purple already had vision there because that's where Purple was before. Oh, wait, the boat's still there. Oh, yeah, okay. So, I sorry, I looked at, at these trees. Yeah, I don't know if Purple knows about that. I mean, imagine if that was a cannon galleon. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, they they screwed up pathing with the most recent patch, and I actually think I know how to duplicate that. It was something that I could duplicate like nine months ago when that was also in a patch, and then they fixed it, and then the new patch brought it back. So I'm not gonna tell you guys how to duplicate that because I feel like I have some level of responsibility. So people aren't glitching units through trees. King from purple on the move. Now, if purple feels like the writing's on the wall here, purple might try and YOLO the king into Roach's base and kill him. And purple has water control, so I actually think purple could be headed to the shoreline to maybe transport. That would be Roach's biggest weakness, is if a king came along the shoreline right next to all these fortifications. Now, we have two-handed swordsmen on the way from Teal. This is with the Malay, so it only costs food for this. The food count's actually pretty decent, at least the amount on food. And two-handed swordsmen are great against Skirms and Halbs, so I could see Roach having problems. Roach would need to spend some gold then. And again, there goes purple. And wolves... Guys, the wolves are fine. I... Okay, so what I said earlier that, you know, we should focus on the wolves, I don't think there's any way these wolves ever get attacked, because they don't aggro ships or anything. I think the wolves will be good. Purple. Sniping the siege. Oh my god, look at this army all of a sudden. It's 150 army for purple and for teal and Roach is completely outnumbered. And there goes purple to a transport ship. Now, if teal were to turn on purple right now, that would be so epic. The docks would fire immediately on that transport. Purple actually coming to the island for safety. Also, just research treason to find the location of Roach's king. Which, from Purple's perspective, would have told them here. It's actually in the tower behind the castle. So this king might think about whether or not he wants to die. But again, I feel like that king might actually be used against Roach at some point. Now, Incas have slingers, and slingers are really good against infantry. So Halb Slinger could be a good composition here, but you need a lot more army if you're Roach does have 19k food and 4k wood, so if he just... It becomes a skill thing now. Like, can he keep up with all of this? I think with purple... Purple has enough eco right now. Um, that random ram, that's kind of funny. Purple actually has enough to, to not want to commit suicide here. Like, purple's doing fine. Purple's contributing a, a lot right now. What they need to do is they need to trade. They need to... Any gold they have, they need to trade. I think water would be safe for both of them. Uh, so they could be making trade cogs. You could tell Roach had clicked slingers because of the swordsmen. And that was a massive army of slingers and just needs to have the slingers behind the halps. And help slinger you should dominate here. And they are on water, right? And purple's still bringing more cannon galleons over. So let's talk about how things could potentially play out here. It's important to break it down. So let's say, uh, you know, one of two things are going to happen, right? Either Roach is going to finally kill, take out like Purple's base and then have to worry about water or Roach is going to eventually be killed. So let's just say Roach is eventually killed off by these two. Well, Purple and Teal are both on the water then. And Purple's got a navy, but Teal's got fortifications and the ability to make navy. So... If Roach is ever close to going down, which it will probably be if that ever happens, it'll take a long time. Players may try and time it where right before Roach dies, they turn on the other player. Ooh, I actually, people said Wonder Race. I actually think this could be a Wonder Race because Roach is going to end up with, like having so much land army, but he can never push water. And then I could see Purple and Teal not having enough on land. And they can't push land. Now, I mean, the cannon galleons on the shoreline, the docks on the shoreline, all of that's going to be really tough for Roach. 
to deal with, but Roach could still move his equal inwards. Hmm. Interesting. We shall see, friends. We shall see. Um, Thank you, King Conquest, for the 13. Welcome back. Good to be back. If you had to pick somebody right now to win this game, who do you pick? I'm not sure. Roach is 100 army. And I think the combination of Slinger and Halb is going to be really strong. But Roach also doesn't have friends. So Roach is the strongest player. But he has no friends. Sad times. Um, teal and purple at potential? And they have water. Neither of them have wonder building resources, though. And they have very little gold income. Honestly, the proper prediction might be that this goes on for another six hours. Is <laughs> uh, really tricky. Green's King is in this tower. Now, maybe, like, if Purple had Trebs, Purple could transport the Trebs in here and start to take stuff out, but it's just going to be the Cannon Galleons. Ooh, Teal's dropping a castle there. That is sneaky, and Roach just researched trees, and then we'll know that the guys are on water. I think Roach is experienced enough where he might actually start to speak to Purple or to Teal, because this is getting very stalemate -y, and Roach might feel like there's a chance to get them to change their side again. Like, I think something you could say if you're Roach is you could say, you go to Purple, be like, hey, we were friends together for so long. If you look at Teal, he's going to go for a wonder victory, and you won't be able to stop him with those docks. So let's just kill him or something. And Greasy Joe says, where is his king? The king is very close to all this, but Roach now has a treb. So Teal's just dropped a castle, and the castle's just going to be treb down. Like, this castle doesn't do anything. Except, you know, disrupt some eco originally. I think experienced players would be trading. And if teal and purple would be trading, Roach would eventually just run out of gold. But they're not using their water to trade. Wait, purple's going to suicide. Purple said, where is his hing? I go soon him. Which I think translates to, where is his king? I go soon. And the answer was here, right? So I think Purple's actually going to use the king. This could give Teal the win. The player who didn't ally anyone and then at one point just said ally me and it worked. Purple says you and me got this, Teal. Purple, you know you don't got this if your king dies, right? You're then dead. That is not you getting this. That is you looking at Teal on the podium with the medal as you are dead on the ground witnessing it. You are... It is no longer a team the second you die. I just want to make sure that's clear. Now, that's all good if you're happy with that sacrifice, but I'm not sure if that, you know, is something you want to do here. Here comes the king. And Roach would have to run immediately. And even if Roach does run, he's going to lose a lot of his eco. He needs to do his laundry. That's true. Oh, and he did offer, if you want, I'll try and snipe with my king so you can win. And I, I mean, Teal's not going to say no to that, is he? <laughs> it's just, sounds like a great deal. All right, there goes the king, guys. There goes the king, and Roach's castle's probably going to kill it. And castle's going to kill it, and Greasy Joe says forever Teal. Now, you should, if you notice that someone's defeated, you should immediately start looking where your king is and see if you see a bunch of unit animations. Roach doesn't see it. What in the world? Roach is going to lose. And Patamonium, who hadn't allied anyone, is going to win. He's going to get completely rewarded for it. Because this is community games. And you can't predict how community games play out. Never a doubt for Teal, I'm sure. Teal's probably like all part of the plan. I'm actually a little angered by that. <laughs> Guys, with the games that we've seen... Over the last five or six years, where it's like the importance of teamwork in Diplo, the amount of theories that I spew out of my mouth to see <laughs> Teal win this game after the start with, with you know, how little Diplo actually happened in the early game is wild. But I'll tell you what, man, Teal is a fighter. Teal could have given up. Teal could have felt like there was no hope. Teal did back Greasy Joe, right? 
Teal supported Greasy Joe in all the ways that Teal could, with elephants and with two-handed swordsmen, and transported away, dropped tons of docks, and, you know, eventually they, they whittled down the best player in the game. Padna and Chats is Padamonium here. I don't play Diplo XD. This is my surprise phase. Really? You don't play Diplo? Wow. Oh, that's a shock, man. Actually, I that's that's news to me, my friend. That is news to me. What in the world? I mean, it worked. Like half the players in this game didn't play Diplo, in all fairness. I still feel really bad for Flying Dutchman, but it absolutely got the job done. You cannot argue with the results, I suppose. When when things when Diplo was needed, it happened, I suppose. Um Flying Dutchman. Um or, sorry, not Flying Dutchman. Patrimonium, 433 kills, 625 losses in this game. Uh, eco count, not that crazy. Was there any trade with any allies? Nope, not so, not whatsoever. Looks like maybe there was a little bit of Relic Gold at some point. But, um, you know, teamed up with the right guy, perhaps. Put Roach into a bad spot. I think Roach will regret not moving the king. Because, like, Roach's most vulnerable area was the shoreline. So, obviously, in an ideal world, Roach notices how that king dies and moves it. But I think you could do yourself more favors if you have the king here, because it is not near where the potential threat could come. Right? Because if purple tries to run through, purple always dies here, which means that the king would be safe in this area. But, like, you also had the threat from the attack on the other side. And, like, Roach didn't really have gold. So... It was an interesting Pilgrims game. I think, though, we had people who played for the first time and some people just didn't realize that it was a Diplo game. Or maybe they didn't care. Roach says, I thought my fire galleys got his transport so I didn't check my base. Ah, yeah. That's interesting because Roach did research treason at one point and purple was over here. So the fires headed over there could have made you think that he was still sitting in the transport ship. Huh. I like it. Rooster Chuck says Red was super close to kill me. I don't know who you were, Rooster Chuck. You're going to have to tell me what your username was. You probably weren't Fox. Fox and a rooster doesn't gel. You weren't Flying Dutchman. I, I, I don't know who exactly you were. But, like, it was wild, guys. Like, you go back to the middle of this game, like, right before someone died. Oh, you're Greasy Joe. Got it. But, like, look at this. This is almost unprecedented for 2023 community games. Look how many players weren't diploing. Um, and then Fox killed the only person that Fox had friendship with. So, like, Fox struggled. Dutchman struggled, to be honest. Hot Cal struggled. Stone Age Knave never allied a soul. Patamonium only, like, demanded alliances. <laughs> Patamonium just said, ally me, and got two people to team. That was, a, that was a weird game. Anyways, I hope people enjoyed this. Uh, people who watch this later on, hope you had a good time. Hope it made your day a little bit better. Hopefully it made your... If you are someone who struggles with Diplo, hopefully that made you feel good. You're not the only one. Uh, apparently you don't need friends, at least for the whole game, to win a game. As this game showed here, you just need to be creative. And you just need someone who's greasy to sacrifice the king. I will again restate it because that Purple said some words at the end. Purple said... You and I can do this, Teal. Um, no, Teal did it. Y you are dead, just as the person you killed. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Greasy Joe. Teal may give you some credit, but at the end of the day, Teal did it. <laughs> Teal's got that, the win, and no one can take that away from him. Good game.